Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everyone, it's Caleb here, and I'm just driving back from my polling place. As you can see, I just voted, and it really got me to thinking about voting. We often talk about voting as being a right, but the truth is, whether you agree with this or not, our founders really didn't see it that way. They thought of voting as a privilege, and not a privilege only for people that were super wealthy or people that were well-connected, but their idea was you had to be a landowner to be able to vote. Now, nowadays we might look back at that and see, oh, well, that was certainly something that was specifically only going to benefit the wealthy, but back then that wasn't the case. In fact, your biggest landowners were normally your poorer people because they lived in more rural areas. And another thing to remember, too, is even though, of course, I supported the women's suffrage movement and, and through history I believe that that is a good thing, I also want to point out that at the time, they actually had women's suffrage. It wasn't as though they were keeping women from voting. It wasn't as though they were keeping minorities from voting. It was just you had to own some land, and the vast majority of those landowners happened to be white men. And when it comes down to it, it had nothing to do with trying to disenfranchise certain portions of the community. What it came down to was taxes. Remember that we fought the revolution over the idea of taxation without representation. But it's equally important to remember that the founders also did not believe in representation without taxation. In other words, they believed that you had to have skin in the game in order to be able to have a say in how federal dollars are spent and how the federal government operates. If you weren't helping to fund the federal government through your property taxes, then you shouldn't have a right to have any kind of say in it. Now, we can argue back and forth, and frankly, I think that there are merits to both sides of the argument as to whether or not this in philosophy wound up working out well. But I do think that you could make a compelling case for something similar happening today. I don't think that you could tie it right back to owning property the way that they did back then because our society is just so different now. And the way that we operate, the way we operate economically is very different now. But I actually think you could make a pretty compelling case for anybody that is not taxed to not be able to vote. Because Benjamin Franklin and other founders, but specifically him, said that the republic would essentially be over when the people realized that they could vote themselves tax dollars out of the treasury at their neighbor's expense. So in other words, if you were able to vote people that would give you more money than you were putting into the system, that would be the end of the country. And since that's been going on for several decades now, and we have actually a majority of people that are voting that are not contributing anything to taxes at the federal government, and yet many of those people are the recipients of federal dollars and federal programs and benefit from them, we can see how broken our system is now, and that's a big part of it. So whether or not you agree with the idea of voting being an actual right or being a privilege, I think that we can all agree that thinking about it as an absolute right that should be afforded to everybody, whether or not you have skin in the game, has frankly yielded pretty disastrous results because people just are not as cautious spending their own money as they are somebody else's money. That's just part of human nature. We tend to be more cautious when we have labored for that which we have. And because of that, I think that that's a big part of the reason that our political system now is broken. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.